frankly, you know, the point you made about the bitter sweet. Look, uh, well off people can deal with this type of a situation. They live at home. Uh, you know, they have they have a ecosystem which is comfortable. But what it's been for the poor people, for migrants, it's completely devastating. They've lost confidence, actually. Kafi logo ne mujhe bola ki bilkul bharosa ho gaye hain. Bharosa hi nahi bacha. And and that I think is a is a very sad thing and a a dangerous thing for the country. And I think right from the beginning, I mean, this is my my view. Uh, whether it was in terms of how this problem was to be perceived, uh, you know, I don't understand why, despite being an Asian country, we sought not to look at what was happening east, but we looked at, you know, uh, at Italy and France and Spain and the UK and subsequently the US, uh, which are really not the right benchmarks in in any sense, you know, whether it's uh, by inherent immunity, temperature, demography. Uh, predisposition to thrombosis, etc. Everything that the scientists and doctors have spoken of, we should never have been looking there, even in terms of how to approach this from a medical point of view, starting with the bogey of medical infrastructure. You know, we, we are all aware that uh, uh, there can be no medical infrastructure that can be adequate uh, to combat something like this. But nobody was willing to explain the maths to us that we are so many people and if so many are vulnerable, 5% or whatever it is, uh, this is what that number looks like and this is how we are preparing ourselves or perhaps we cannot prepare ourselves. Maybe that's not a politically appropriate thing to say. But, you know, as Narayan Murtiji always says, when in doubt, disclose. I think we have fallen very short of disclosing uh, facts, logic and the truth. And this has then got amplified and instilled such an enormous fear in people that people seem to think that uh, the contagion is equal to a contagious cancer or something. And now to uh, change the mind of people and bring them back on board and make them comfortable with the thought of quote unquote living with the virus, which seems to be the new narrative coming from government now, it's going to take a long time. So what, what do you feel? I mean, this is how I have seen. I was I was speaking to some um, some experts and some specialists, and right in the early days of the lockdown, one of them told me, and which struck in my stuck in my mind, uh, struck in my mind, which he said that look, realize that the moment you apply a full lockdown, you're changing the nature of the disease. You're moving okay. from a non-fatal disease to a fatal disease in the minds of people. And once you've done that, then to reverse that, that is going to take a significant amount of time and it's going to take a lot of effort. And, right. and he also said that, look, don't view the lockdown as an on-off switch. It's not going to be an on-off switch. Because once you, have, once you have moved into a lockdown, switching it off, uh, off again, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be extremely complicated. Right. I, I liked your point about we looked west and not east. Why do you think we looked west? I guess, as some people say, it's the first time uh, that something like this, as opposed to TB or pneumonia or, or diarrhea, something as simple as diarrhea that apparently kills 100,000 largely children in, in India. Here is something that struck in the heart of the developed world. Uh, you know, and uh, when the rich and famous get affected, uh, it always makes a bigger headline. Uh, you know, as someone said in the very early days of this problem, that 8,000 kids die of starvation in Africa every day. Who cares? You know, beyond the point. Uh, in civil society, we are not even aware of this fact. So I think uh, primarily uh, the sensation was because uh, uh, affluent people in developed countries uh, were vulnerable. And perhaps some people inferred that if it can happen to them, then we don't want to stay here. This kind of feeling. And uh, that is why I, mean, I have often said to people that, to my mind as a layman, I saw from the beginning that there were four choices uh, before us. At one extreme, uh, on the left, if I may say so, is the choice of a hard lockdown, as you said, which implies a almost airtight, impervious lockdown. And to the best of my knowledge, this has not happened anywhere in the world. 
because to physically constrain yourself to your home and see absolutely no one on the other extreme i would say is uh, you know business as usual um, just ignore it carry on jo hoga hoga type of thing nobody says this either so everybody is trying to find a middle path i think between these two extremes i think unfortunately uh, india not only looked west it went uh, to the wild west i think in the sense we stayed more towards the impervious side we tried to implement a hard lockdown but we, which was still porous so i think we have ended up with the worst of both worlds on the one hand a porous virus makes sure that the uh, porous lockdown makes sure that the virus will still exist and as you said it is still waiting to hit you when you unlock so you have not solved that problem but you have definitely decimated the economy you flattened the wrong curve uh, you know it's not the infection curve it's the gdp curve uh, this is what we have ended with the worst of both worlds in my view what should have been done is something more right of center uh, which is the kind of stuff that we are hearing out of japan and sweden um, and people when they hear about this in terms of being articulated as herd immunity tend to think that herd immunity means you know let the vulnerable die uh, it doesn't mean that at all uh, they are missing the details that whether it's in terms of sanitization masks distancing sweden japan etc are following all these practices uh, but they are not trying to go further uh, into the unproductive zone as you said and make something that is relatively uh, benign and manageable appear to be fatal and beyond control so i think unfortunately we we have a quasi hard lockdown i would say which has given us the worst of both worlds hmm. and and looking at our situation it's completely different uh, we have migrants we have daily wage labor and for some reason we looked west uh, interesting question to me is why didn't we look internally for our own solution instead of looking Uh, to the west or even to the east why didn't we say okay we are actually a confident country let's look at ourselves and let's come out with an indian solution which is you know sort of what you do with your motorcycles so why why was not why was that not the natural impulse hmm. so if you were to kind of have the luxury of going back to middle of march yeah jab pradhan mantri ji ne pehle wo janta curfew announce kiya fir unhone the first lockdown announce kiya Yeah. Uh, if you could go back then, uh, to your mind, how would you have uh, crafted a different roadmap uh, for the last three months? Look, hindsight is twenty twenty. Okay, so it's much easier for me to now tell you how I would have crafted it. But what our discussion internally in the Congress Party uh, was at the time that the response has to be decentralized. Hmm. The central government has to operate as a support system. and as an enabler there are certain things that the central government needs to do air traffic railways etc etc and that it does but then it moves it moves the battle to the district moves the battle to the chief ministers and allows them and enables them to fight now if you look at what has happened after the lockdown which by the way i've been calling a failed lockdown because it's the only lockdown in the world where the disease is actually increasing after we are opening up sure what you're finding is you're going back to that anyway mm. the, the central government has backed off and has now said okay we are going to be forced to leave it to the states so the correct response is actually happening organically because that's but the it is, but it's but too late. now it is happening but no, it's too late the, yeah to our perception as a common citizen it is now happening as a passing of the buck not as a passing of strategy well that's that's fine that might be the case but the result is that india is has had a two month pause button and then india is now going back and reacting the way it should have reacted on on day one and now the country has taken over right, right. and then you can see different you can see different strategies coming out you can see a strategy in punjab you can see a strategy in chatisgarh you can see a strategy in maharashtra some will do better than the others but you've got a more uh, bespoke response where where your costs will suddenly drop the 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 ability to deal with the situation will will improve that that's one aspect of it the second aspect of it is and i think this is absolutely fundamental i saw 
I saw what the Germans uh, uh, have done and what some of the Americans have done, uh, what uh, the Koreans are doing, <coughs> what the Japanese have done. Massive, massive injection of, of money to save the economy. And it doesn't matter. Look, I'm speaking to a big business guy. It doesn't matter. You don't view it like big business, small business, a laborer, not laborer. You view it as our biggest resource is our economy. We have to at all cost protect our economy. Whoever has to be supported right now should be supported period the end. So that would be a, the second component of a strategy. Uh, some people argue you know, support the small and medium businesses. Absolutely, 100%. But there's a link between small and medium businesses yes. and Mr. Bajaj. Small and medium yeah. businesses cannot, cannot operate without the big businesses. So you Absolutely. have to create a holistic structure. See, the, the central thing in my view, and this is something that in my little experience uh, I've learned, is in India, if you want to do something, be compassionate. Be compassionate, right. listen. And the country will automatically tell you what it is desiring. So, so there are there are people right now screaming in pain. Uh, and the most obvious, the most obvious are uh, the manual laborers, the daily wages, and maybe the farmers, and then the small and medium business. But big, big business is also screaming in pain because even they sure. don't see a future. So huge component of it is building confidence the leadership to build confidence to say okay listen we are here with the country has had a terrible time there's a there's a virus that has hurt everybody now we are going to support everybody and carry everybody out help carry everybody out together from this situation so there's a there's an empathy that has to be built into it where where the the Indian citizen, whether he is big business, medium business, laborer, farmer, says, "Ha, bhai, ho jayega, nikal jayenge, naya paar ho jayegi." That that feeling has to come, and that's my main issue is that when you have a top-down situation, that empathy is not there, and then you basically break the will of people to find. So that that would be my long answer to you. I don't know what sure. you think about that. No, I mean, uh, I agree with most parts of what you're saying. To put some color onto that, uh, I was speaking with uh, the Pune Police Commissioner, Dr. Venkatesham, who's a very fine man. And I said to him, Dr. Saab, my dissonance is that for the 50 years I've lived in Pune, uh, you know, and I'm particularly sensitive to the fact that India is the capital of the world when it comes to fatalities from road accidents, you know, whatever be the causes, but that's the net result. But I have seen that when 30-40-50 helmet, riding, what do the police? 99.9% of the time, they don't do anything. On the other hand, if someone doesn't wear a mask, or somebody steps out for a morning or evening walk, you are caning them, you are making them do exercises in the middle of the road to humiliate them, आपने उनके हाथ में बोर्ड लगा दिया है कि मैं देश द्रोही हूँ, मैं गधा हूँ, etc. I mean, where is proportion uh, in the way we are treating our own people? You talked of compassion. You know, I'm giving you the example that I've seen with my own eyes over here. I've seen senior citizens being caned for simply stepping out to get a, some fresh air. We hear stories of people from Japan to the U.S. getting thousand dollars a person, uh, not as a stimulus, as support. So we are not even talking stimulus here. We are just talking support, whether it is for big business, small business, and for individuals. Um, I am not aware of how authentic these numbers are, but I am told in many places in the world, uh, two thirds of the uh, what the government has handed out has gone to organizations and to people as direct benefits. Whereas in India, it's been only 10%. I mean, you would be better place to, uh, to comment on why this is so. Why have we not chosen to put more directly in the hands of people? Well, you know, I've, it's frankly been shocking to me and shocking to uh, us in the Congress party, including ex-Prime Minister, uh, Finance Minister, ex-Finance Minister and others. And, I've been trying to figure this out myself. So a couple of days back, I sent a feeler to some of the government people. I said, you know, 
I don't understand why you're not giving a stimulus. Like, because logically to me, it just makes absolute sense. And I said, look, forget the politics of it. Just give me the logic of it because I want to understand the logic. I don't understand the logic. And the response I got, it was a couple points, couple bullet points. Point number one, there is a huge opportunity for India with regards to China. Point number two, if we give a handout to our labor now, bigger jayenge, basically, they will get spoiled and they will not come back from their uh, villages. Point number three, we might send the wrong message to the international community who we will need to invest in us. And point number four, later we might consider giving money to these laborers and small and medium businesses. Image is based on strength. Strength can never be based on image. But here you're defending the image and you're destroying the strength. The strength, whoever is going to invest in India is going to invest not because of your image. They're going to invest because of what you are, what you have and what you are and what you have is your economy. So the first logic has to be defend that economy. And if you defend that economy, well, you will have an image and you will succeed in inviting whoever you want over here. But if you don't have an economy left, well, there's nothing. I strongly believe that a large country like India cannot save itself out of trouble. It has to sell itself out of trouble. We have to get demand going again. We have to provide something that lifts the mood of the people. We need some mood elevators out there. Mm. And I do not understand why there is no strong uh, uh, initiative, even if it is for a period of six months, one year, to strongly lift the mood of the people and provide a stimulus to demand. The economy slowed down before Corona. Of course. Uh, unemployment was becoming a serious problem before Corona. Uh, and now Corona has sort of pushed it over the edge. How do you see India taking care of its unemployment problem? Like what, I mean, how do we, how do we think about it moving forward? Of course, you're, you're a, a part of the puzzle. Small and medium industry is a much bigger part of the puzzle. How do you unleash this manufacturing, which I believe is absolutely critical. I mean, I'm not one of those people who thinks that India can be built without manufacturing. Right. So, so how do we start competing uh, on the global stage? The other day I was interviewing a, uh, a potential senior candidate out of Brazil because Bajaj is now looking at going to Brazil. And I asked him a question and I said, uh, you know, Honda is so dominant in Brazil. The other Japanese have not been able to dislodge Honda. Why do you think Bajaj has a chance? And he said something very simple, but often the truth resides in simple things. He says, in Bajaj, I see a combination of European design, Japanese quality and Indian prices. And I think this is a magic formula mm -hmm. for so many Indian companies. You know? It doesn't matter whether you are making a mixer grinder or a motorcycle or you know whatever it is. Uh, I think the world can be your oyster if you look at it from this lens. So I think demand generation starts with wanting to play at a global platform. Next, this automatically means that, you know, then you have to narrow down uh, the things that you are doing. I mean, if you want to be Mahindra Singh Dhoni, you cannot play six sports at the same time. Everybody knows that, you know, a great chef, a great sports person, a great doctor, a great musician, they all specialize. Companies must specialize. I think the simple meaning of strategy is specialization. But in, in what you said, I found uh, one thing very interesting, which was you said uh, Japanese technology, European styling, and Indian prices. Right? I got that right? Absolutely. What you're basically saying is India is a bridge. India is a bridge, connecting bridge between different cultures. Uh, between different different systems. And I think that's something that India's historically been very good at. Mm -hmm. And if you look, if you look when we've been successful, we've always operated as a connector, whether it is in our sort of foreign policy, whether it is in, uh, you know, our business system, whether it is in our philosophy, 
we have the ability which not many countries and civilizations have of absorbing that's that's a powerful thing for us yeah and i i agree with you that's a very valid point i never looked at it like that and i think i was just asking myself as you were speaking uh, why is this the case of course it is uh, partly our temperament i suppose partly it's our proficiency in english i suppose etc but you know more than anything i think when i when i reflect on that it is because we are very open as a people yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I don't mean this negatively. I would say uh, we demonstrate more openness uh, to understand, to learn. Uh, sometimes maybe we are in awe of them. That's why we do it. Maybe sometimes it is genuinely we are intellectually you know turned on by something. But whatever it is, we are very open as a people. We are very open as a country. It may work against us sometimes. This openness, you know. Uh, should never be lost this is very important as you were saying whether it's in terms of government or in terms of business but you said openness right and we are open our civilization is open because there has been traditionally a certain tolerance in our country jo i mean jo kehna keh do right and that's been the case one gets the sense that that is that has reduced significantly over the last couple of years i mean i'll 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 be candid with you yesterday a friend of mine asked me you know what's your next interview and i said oh i'm you know speaking to bajaj mr bajaj and the guy said oh dum hai bande mein so i said what do you mean he said well he's got guts to speak to you right mm. and and that is the sense yeah know? so i mean i tell you what my experience is in fact uh, Uh, very similar to yours i shared with someone yesterday that kal uh, 12 baje uh, uh, i'm speaking with rahul um, and this thing and the first reaction was don't do it uh, i said i said but why not nahi mat karna this can get you into trouble so i said but i may have said some things perhaps a, a little too uh, vehemently i but i have said it on indi tv i have said it on uh, in the economic times newspaper uh, i have said it on aaj tak i have said it on so many channels so many media so ab galti hai to phir galti ho chuki hai ek aur baar ho gaya ye se nahi media mein bolna ek baat hai but uh, rahul gandhi se baatein karna ek dusra baat hai so then i pushed that actually a bit i'll tell you very candidly i said yaar we are going to talk about business economics lockdown what to do how to move forward technology products he loves motorcycles i'm sure he will talk about motorcycles etc ab ye baatein bhi nahi ho sakti hai kya so that person uh, maintained uh, that uh, why why take a risk do you think this sort of mahol that you spoke about of uh, fear damages business in any way nahi dekhiye uh, nobody will invest unless uh, he does so with enthusiasm and confidence to so, isme to koi doubt hai nahi ab sawal ye uthta hai hindustan mein ki if a 100 people are afraid to speak up the first point is perhaps 90 of them anyway have something to hide hmm. see we must also accept that in the last few years towards i would say upa 2 and nda 1 a lot of skeletons have come out of the cupboard also so businessmen are also not dud ka dudwa dula hua you know so uh, and so many examples we have seen of that so maybe i mean my view is a lot of people don't speak uh, unlike if i may say so somebody like my father simply because perhaps they can't afford to speak you know so it may be fear but the question is fear of what uh, maybe they have a fear of hiding something hmm. uh, second i would say there are people and i think uh, you know i think highly of such people who do not want to speak you know who simply do not want to because they cannot deal with the backlash that comes their way mm. uh, you know and i think a little bit i fall into that category i mean there's a reason i am not on any social media mm. and without naming a couple of channels i will say to you that uh, even yesterday i had uh, uh, a invite from the most prominent channel uh, that is very pro government if i may say so and and i i refuse to be on such channels because you know the kind of stuff one hears uh, on social media or the way uh, one sees things conducted in panels on such channels this is deeply distressing to anybody who is remotely sensitive 
you know so i think yes, in terms of being tolerant in terms of being sensitive uh, i think uh, india needs to mend a couple of things final question now we are in the process of opening up how do you think about your supply chain as we open up when when does your supply chain actually start to function uh, at a reasonable level what what now we open up to require hmm. see i am not seeing that smooth concerted rhythmic movement towards unlocking yes i understand based on what i have heard yesterday also that we are moving in that direction but i think a kind of aligned approach that is required hmm. ki bhai one person will say one thing abhi i don't know whether that is a, to be the chief minister of the state or the, the dm or whoever it is supposed to be and everybody in a aligned way must go forward this is not happening and i think the blame for this rests again with the kind of fear we created in the first place you know that infection is equal to death uh, and today as infections rise people are still carrying that this thing so i'm sorry i'm not answering your question directly but i am really distressed because it is a herculean task uh, to to open up i think the first problem is to get this fear out of the minds of the people there has to be a very clear aligned narrative i would say from the prime minister because you know right or wrong when he says something people seem to follow i think he needs to stand up and say to everyone that this is how we are going to move forward it's all under control do not fear infections no, almost nobody is dying uh, you know and and we have to move forward now okay well thank you thank you very much rajiv lovely lovely thank you so much time so much time you spent with me thank you very much really appreciate thank it you.